The evidence is piling up that President Obama's move to get congressional approval for a strike against Syria could fail. Moderate Republican Susan Collins of Maine joked she's firmly undecided and expressed many concerns over the U.S. becoming more entangled in Syria's civil war. Senator John McCain, who's pushed for U.S. airstrikes and aiding Syrian rebels, got hammered by constituents today. Why are you not listening to the people and staying out of Syria? It's not our fight. Back Israel. I got you. I got your message, pal. And you need to also listen to the majority of the American people who do not want you to go there. The Navy's top admiral says the four U.S. destroyers off the coast of Syria are fully ready for a wide range of possible actions. One of those destroyers is the ever-based USS Shu. The big question also this morning, do U.S. lawmakers and the American people have the stomach to stand behind a mission right now? Right now, it appears the president's plan to punish Syria is losing support. Let's get to Chief Congressional Correspondent Dan Abash, live from Capitol Hill this morning, trying to track all the votes. Looks at the moment more undecided than anything else, Dana. That's right. Look, it, we've seen an unprecedented lobbying effort by the Obama administration, bipartisan support from congressional leaders. Despite that, uh, it does seem that the momentum we saw earlier this week for the president has stalled. And talking to lawmakers, there are lots of reasons for that, not the least of which is the opposition that they're hearing from the voters who sent them here. I am unalterably opposed to having a single American uh, uh, boot on the ground. We sent you to stop the war. For undecided lawmakers, watching what happened to pro-Syria bombing Senator John McCain back home is a cautionary tale. This is what I think of Congress. They are a bunch of marshmallows. Why are you not listening to the people and staying out of Syria? It's not our fight. Even for a town hall veteran like McCain, this was rough. We cannot afford to turn Syria into another Iraq or Afghanistan. I beg you. Lawmakers are hearing that kind of opposition all across the country. It's part of the reason even the president's most loyal supporters, like members of the Black Caucus, are very wary of authorizing a strike. Of course, there's a large number of them that say, uh, we don't want you to go to war. A House Democratic leadership source insists to CNN the majority of lawmakers are still persuadable because they have not yet been briefed. The problem for the president is how many, especially fellow Democrats, are reluctant even after attending classified briefings intended to persuade them. We're our allies, and what will they do? I know the 37 nations have said that they would support us, but what does support mean? Democrat Tulsi Gabbard is a combat veteran of the Iraq War. I'm seeing firsthand uh, the extreme cost of war, both uh, overseas as well as here at home, uh, is something that is giving me um, uh, a, a unique perspective, but great pause. She is like many who don't question whether Bashar al-Assad used chemical weapons, but do question Obama officials' ability to answer key questions in public or private about military contingencies after the U.S. bombs. Like, what if Assad finds a way to use chemical weapons again? Do we strike again? Well, that's the definition of further entanglement. That's the definition of our becoming deeply involved in a war. And most members who are truly undecided really do appear to be doing their homework. We've talked to several who say that they are attending more than one classified briefing, trying to get as much information as they can in order to make their decision. Many say they are counting on a presidential primetime address, which we do expect in the coming days, in order to convince them and, perhaps more importantly, their constituents, urging them to vote no. Chris.